Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with the scrappy quilt. It was a strip quilt that turned into a patchwork quilt. Very quick and easy. Absolutely love this method. We are going to wrap things up and here's the tentative plan. This is what I have in my head. I am backing it with flannel. I am going to put some batting. I, I like polyester batting because A, it's cheap. B, it's lightweight. C, it washes great. And anyway, that's what I'm using. We are going to be doing a ragged edge, extra raggy. I will be adding fabric along the edges to give us more rag when it's done. That's the plan. I did want to mention, I did not wash my fabrics first. I like rag quilts to be washed after. I want all the magic to happen after. I didn't wash the flannel either. This is what I found for flannel. And I love it. It's a remnant that I picked up at Marden's. And I love the colors with the quilt. And I love that it's a funky stripe, which makes me think of the original quilt top when it was striped. But yet it's got these little like marks. I don't know. I just think it is super cool. And that is what I'm using. I have a yard remnant, so that's going to be enough. So here's how we get started. I am opening up my flannel. I'm going to fold it in half this way and then also this way. I'm going to do the same with my quilt top. I didn't trim around the edges. There's some blocks that are not even, but that's okay. That all gets taken care of when we do the ragging step. Folding it in half both ways. And I'm laying it on top, corner to corner. This is the fold. And I'm just going to trim around it. And I'm going to be a little bit generous with the edge because, just because, I like to be generous. So I have probably a half an inch extra of the flannel. Now we want to add some fabric to the edges of this because we want to make it more raggy. I think that setting is better. You were looking kind of blue. I don't think I'm necessarily going to go and sew it. I'm going to just pin it because the sewing is just an extra step I don't like to take. So first I'm going to see, do I have enough of this? If I were to do one, two, three, four strips. Oh yes, I will. All right, so I'm going to just cut the salvages off of this. You don't even have to use the same flannel, but I'm just going ahead and using it. Since I have it, I'm gonna cut the salvage off. And I'm going to cut this in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to be laying this around the edges, but I'm going to add some muslin too. I think the muslin will give a nice added raggedy touch. So I will put the muslin against this and then this on top of the muslin and then that will give, I don't know, just a separation of color. So let me grab some muslin. I have some scrap pieces left over from my previous project. I'm just going to fold this, trim this a little bit on this edge. And then we are, I don't know, about this wide. I'm not even using the edge. You can tell it doesn't matter. And let's do one more, maybe two more. I think might have enough here. Okay, I'm going to start pinning that on here. So I'm just going to take an edge. I'm going to lay down some muslin. I'm cutting off that selvage. Right from the corner, down. I'll trim that after. And I'm going to put some flannel there. And I'm putting the, the print side up. And I'm going to put a few pins. Save myself a sewing step. If you want, you can go ahead and, you know, sew all your strips down first. They don't have to line up perfectly with the edge because we're 
dragging it. Okay, I'm going to trim and turn. I'm going to use this piece that I just trimmed. Take the selvage off this end. And I'm going to lay that here. Another strip of flannel. Pin this a little bit. Now I'm going to continue here with some more muslin. Just going to lay it down. Look at this, so easy. And trim. I love little scraps like this so much. I don't think I could ever make a rag quilt and skip this step. Absolutely love the extra ragging on the edge. And there we have it. Now we want to cut the batting so that it is smaller than this because we don't want the batting to be in the ragging part because the batting doesn't rag. I, I think you can do it with cotton batting but not polyester batting. So we want to make sure that the polyester batting is completely enclosed. So we're going to cut it smaller and I will be, I think, quilting this to a small extent. I plan on stitching in the ditch on maybe a couple of the rows just to hold the batting into place. So we're going to cut the batting smaller then we will put the quilt top on top and we'll go from there. To make this a little bit easier I'm hoping I'm going to measure and I'm going to measure like here you know on the inside of that border 30 by about 31. I'm going to just lay this down I'm folding it up. Half of 30 is 15. So I'm going to fold it a little bit more. A hair more. That should be good. Good, good. So that's going to give me 30 when I open that up. Now I just have to go 31 in the other direction. If it's a little too big, it can always be trimmed as you're sewing to get it out of the way. So 31. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just cutting. Let's put our flannel down. Ouch! Hate pins. And that looks just about right. Okay, that like came out awesome. It's just the amount of batting that I want. If there's some in the way, I will trim it as I sew. Well, actually I can see there's a little bit here that I kind of want out of the way. So let me trim it right now, like that. Now I want to put my quilt top on there. And I want it, you know, center it as good as I can. I'm going to turn it this way. And in case you don't know, I hate making quilts. <laughs> I don't enjoy this part at all. Okay, that looks pretty centered. Now I need to put some pins. And I'm running out of pins, out of my long pins that I love so much. I'm going to go ahead and do some pinning. What I'm going to do before I sew around the edges is I'm going to stitch in the ditch on, I don't know, I might do each and every row. What do you think? We'll just see how it goes. So I'm just going to put a few pins. I'm going to just use whatever pins I have. I know some of you want to tell me about all the pin options I have out there, and I know those things. <laughs> Just don't choose to do them. I could even be using safety pins or, you know, the rounded safety pins that are easy. You do whatever you like to do. I do whatever is like the easiest at the moment. My biggest fear is leaving some of those pins in. <laughs> That's it! I will take you to the machine with me. I have you kind of far away but zoomed in. I hope this is working. The one thing I made sure of is that I have a brand new freshly spun bobbin in my bobbin thingy. <laughs> because I don't want to be spinning a bobbin or winding a bobbin halfway through. The top, I'll probably run out of thread, but I don't mind, you know, changing the top thread. I'm going to start by doing the quilting part. 
and then I will go around the edges. I don't know if that's the way to do it because I'm not a quilter. I'm here to show you that you can do stuff and have no idea what you're doing. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch, which just means I'm going to follow this seam of my rows. You know, the rows that are straight, not this way because, you know, the things aren't matching up and that would be a pain in the ass. So this way, it, it's straight all the way down. And my main concern is not hurting myself with pins. I'm just going to start like where the um, top starts. This is all going to get ragged anyway. We will be going around. So all is good. Here I go. And you don't have to worry about getting right in that ditch. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to, you could use decorative stitching. Do whatever you want. And I'm going to make it a long stitch. I don't know, like seven per inch or something. Maybe even longer. I do want to make sure that it's good on the back side. Looks good. I do have a walking foot. I don't feel like putting it on. And I'm going to pull some of these pins out as I go. Just so you know, I'm not doing anywhere near a perfect job at this. <laughs> I don't even care to. The fact that I'm even doing this at all makes me wonder what's wrong with me because I hate this. I guess I wanted one example of how you can do something you hate and hopefully it still comes out okay. Phew! Survived that. Okay, I'm going to see if there are any pins here. There are. I'm leaving the pins on the edge because that's holding my um, extra fabric down. Okay, I'm just going to go all the way to the other end since I don't know why, but that's what I'm doing. Oh, how I hate all this. <laughs> Let's get this over with. See, I would never want to be doing this on a big quilt. Absolutely never. I don't even like it on a little quilt. And I absolutely despise seeing any quilting stitches on the back of a quilt. Hate it destroys it for me. <sighs> Can I save myself a lot of agony and not do every line? Yes, I can. I think I'm going to go up and down just this wider middle piece here, and we're going to call it a day. I'm calling my method Stitch Near the Ditch. And again, the only reason I'm doing this is because I don't plan on catching the batting on the edges. I will have to come in, I guess, and tack it down somehow because I don't want it to get fucked up. <laughs> Let's worry about that in a minute. All right, I'm going, where did I say I was going? I'm going here now. Okay, I want to take all my inner pins out. Now, we're going to go around the edge. But we won't be catching the batting. I purposely do not want to catch the batting because I want to be able to rag everything. You know what? I'm going to go close to the batting and then maybe um, when I go around a second time, because you know how I like to do my first time all the way around, and then I come in, maybe I'll come in like an inch from the first line, and I'll trap the batting. And then it's going to give us a lot of ragging room. Oh my God, so excited. I have to remember, there are some pins on the inside here that I will have to take out as I go. Okay, um, oh yeah, so, I'm going at least, let me see, probably an inch or an inch and a half even. I want a lot of ragging room. And you don't have to worry about it being straight because I said so. Whoa, here's a pin. 
Okay, I have like a hole here on my thing. <laughs> I'm just using that particular hole as a sort of kind of guide. And if I were to think that my batting is in the way, I'll just push it out of the way. And I'm going to have a pucker here. I pull my pucker to the stitch line and after it's ragged, it will get covered up. See? See, I know all the tricks. Very concerned about leaving pins. Now, see, my top is pretty crooked here, and I'm telling myself continuously that that's okay. <laughs> I'm the queen of puckers. All right, so I'm going to stop like there because I need to turn the corner. If I can do this, anybody can. And <laughs> you can do it better than me. <sighs> Here we go. So much stuff going on. Very crooked here. When I did the stitching in the ditch, I had this fabric sticking way out and you know I could just rip that right there because that wouldn't be hard to do at all but nah I'm just leaving it it'll rag there is no end to this madness oh why do I do this stuff Oh, I'm running out of top thread. Okay, I'm gonna change that. And we continue. Oh my god, we're getting near the end. Nice big pucker to finish it off. <laughs> Some of that puckering will go away with shrinkage. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is check and investigate carefully for pins. I am going to go around again, and I am going to come in about an inch. Oh my god, I found another pin. You don't know how carefully I inspected. And I found a pin while I was inspecting, and I thought I had them all. I even checked the back side. I checked everything. Those little buggers are hard to find. All right. So I'm just eyeballing it, and I'm going to try to go like an inch in, or a little bit more. I just want to catch all the batting. The main reason I hate the quilting so much is that it just allows for so many more mistakes. See, I just don't like this. It's puckering. Oh my god, I'm going to hate this by the time I'm done. I really am. And I know, I know so many of you want to tell me how I should be doing it. I'm doing this wrong. I should do it this way. Maybe this way would be easier. Try this. I don't want to do any of those things. I want quick and easy, and I want to get it over with. And I don't even enjoy the looks of even a perfectly quilted quilt. I don't like it. So my heart and soul does not go into doing this because I don't like the looks of a quilt. So there's my little rant. So why are you doing it, Darlene? For the sake of my viewers. <laughs> Where else can they get such a fine tutorial? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, absolutely use a walking foot if you have one. Unless you're like me and you just don't want to bother. In my case, the back of the quilt is better than the front. <laughs> this is so this is just a mess. But I'm Pretty confident that the washer and dryer will help my case. Let's just start snipping. I mean, look, look at the massive puckers here. I don't know if you can see that. It's like a whole new style of quilting. <laughs> Let's put my little snippers to test. These are very inexpensive and they do need to be oiled every now and then because they start to lock up on me. 
All right, I am going to snip only up to the first stitch line. Ooh. And I do like to go like on the diagonal around the corner. Likey so, you can't see a thing that I'm doing. I so suck at this. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> Let me start with another corner. I like to cut on the diagonal and then I just kind of like keep cutting around that diagonal. You can do whatever you want. That's how I do it. And you can snip a quarter of an inch, half an inch, any kind of inch you want. The more narrow, the more quickly the threads come out and it gets more raggedy. <sighs> One cool thing is I don't have any other ragging to do except for the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and snip my entire edge and then I'm putting this baby in the washer and dryer and then we'll see after if I'm smiling or crying. You guys, we have an issue. It's not an end of the world issue, but I don't have the mental ability to deal with it right now. I had a little surprise when I took the quilt out of the dryer. I actually washed it twice because the first washing, it didn't rag quite enough. So I am going to um, put this episode on hold. I thought I was ending this tonight, but I'm going to think about what I want to do. I'm kind of glad that there's a boo-boo because it will let me show you that, yeah, we make boo-boos. And I just want to think of not so much the best way to fix it because I'm sure there are better ways than what I have in my head. I'm going with quick and easy. All I care about is if a quilt is usable at the end. And it certainly is, especially by a dog. <laughs> Okay, the battery died. I feel like things are falling apart fast for me. I have to just start doing something different. Yeah, a dog won't care if there are boo-boos that got fixed in maybe a messy way. So I will continue this tomorrow. I, um, I'm not trying to be mysterious about it. Again, it's not a big deal. I just want you to come back and see what happened. And together we will fix it, except not together really. Because <laughs> it's just me on this side. <laughs> But I feel like you're there with me. That's it for now. I will be back with episode four, which will be the final episode very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.